it's interesting because um, at the end of every market failure, there's always a call for more regulation, almost as an immediate reaction to what has come before. One of the things that we know is that market failures have happened before, they'll happen again. And I think the big challenge for regulators will be that they cannot be seen to just fight the last collapse. So when you look at the regulatory reforms that are coming out, I think what will stand the test of time is if the new controls that are being put in place will be enough not just to satisfy investors and consumers that they've plugged the holes of the last collapse, but that they're actually doing enough to prevent further collapses in so the system. So that we won't have this idea of a bank being quote unquote too big to fail, that it, it's just about this bank should have measures in place already. So great, exactly. And a great example of that, one of the things that Complinet's doing is we're risk mapping at the moment for a lot of the big banks. What that means is that there needs to be some connection between the products that you're taking to market, who you're selling them to, and how they're actually linked to the regulatory changes. One of the issues, um, in, if you like, that's been identified with the collapse is that all products were sold to all people. So there's now more, uh, you know, more focus around suitability, for example. To take a complex securitized product, uh, an, a, mor a mortgage backed or an auction rated security, and just sell that indiscriminately, that's one of the causes of the collapse. Tell me about regulation here, because that's why you're here. You've held a regulation <coughs> summit. And, uh, the economies here are very different and they're trying to sort of be set up based on different economies. Is that the way to go? That you look at other models and say, well, what's this country doing? What's this country doing? Will it work for here? I don't, I don't think it is the way to go. I, we actually just completed a two-day GCC uh, compliance summit. So we met with a lot of the regulators. One of the questions that came out, and it was a consistent theme, is we can't just take what's happened in the West um, and just apply that wholesale and well, that adaptation into this region. Uh, th there are a variety of reasons for that. Some of that will be around transparency, mm. uh, political will. Um, another one will be around just the shape and size of the economy. Now, uh, one of the things I would say is that there's an advantage that this region has. It can take the best practices um, and it can learn from some of the mistakes in the West. But feeds them into economies which are, not going to say they're not real, but they're heavily weighted. The economy here is heavily weighted in favour of gas exports. That's right. IMF saying growth is going to be 18% in this part of the world in, in Qatar, but that's based only on gas exports, really. I think that becomes a conscious choice for this region and other centres within the GCC. And by that I mean if they want to build out the diversity to get the right amount and right type of inbound investment, I think they'll need to invest very seriously in a structure and a framework that has a very mature set of regulators and has some of the complexities that you would expect with complex financial products. So it becomes a choice. If, however, you're perfectly happy to grow at a certain percent just based on a single commodity, then you could argue that some of those steps just aren't necessary. But that would be unsafe? I don't think it's the right way to go. I think that these regions actually, and I look at the growth here in Doha and of course areas such as Dubai, I think they are trying to build less dependency on a single commodity and trying to build diversity. And I do believe that what the regulators are trying to do here is get investor confidence beyond those single commodities.